In this video, we're going over the extending your network section on the networking fundamentals section of the cybersecurity intro walkthrough series on Troy Hackman. This section is pretty cool. We're going to talk about all kinds of cool technologies. So let's just dive right in. Now, first, we're going to talk about the introduction to port forwarding. This is an essential component to being able to move data securely from an internal network to the internet. Now, before we get too in the weeds here, we need to be familiar with something. We already know about IP addresses. We've talked about that in the OSI model video, and we already talked about in the last video, talking about packets and frames and that kind of thing. However, there are specific ranges of IP addresses that are known as private IP addresses. For instance, 192.168 is known as a private IP address range. And that basically allows for you to create a large and scalable internal home network. You can literally have anything from like five devices on your internal home network to thousands of devices on your internal home network, depending on how you network it. However, those devices likely need to communicate to the internet somehow. After all, you're watching this video, right? And unless you're watching this from YouTube corporate, in which case, howdy, how's it going? Great to meet you. Then you're definitely not able to get this video feed from your internal network. And that is how port forwarding enters into the conversation. Your router has an internal and an external IP address. And if the internal IP address will be a private IP address, like a 192.168 kind of IP. And then its external IP address will be unique to it and it'll let the internet know how, you know, what address to be able to route the request from your device back to you. But we also talked about ports and you're, you know, say you're watching this on port 80 because you enjoy having no encryption. You live wild. Then you will send that request to port 80 of your router, but it will also translate that to port 80 for the external side and then it will forward it off to the internet. You can configure this. So say you don't want port 80 open to the internet because everybody in the world knows that port 80 is, is unencrypted HTTP and they want access to that. So say to add a little bit of ambiguity to the ports, you wanna use say port, I don't know, 33333. You can open up port 33333 on your router and then say, okay, whenever I send a request to port 80 on the internal side of your router, I want you to send that through port 33333 on the external side. That's how you can do port forwarding. Now that doesn't necessarily mean you're like 100% secure. If an attacker scans your device and they scan all the ports and they see that port 80 is closed, but they see that HTTP is still open on port 33333, well, you know, then they still see it. However, if they're not scanning for all ports, they're only scanning for the well-known ports, and they see that port 80 is over, is not open, then I don't know, maybe they'll move on. But there's a number of other functions that port forwarding is totally good for. So definitely look into that if that's something you're interested in. Next, let's talk about firewalls. This is very important. A firewall is basically responsible for protecting your network and you can set up a number of rules with a firewall. For instance, if there is a known hostile IP address on the internet that you're familiar with, you can tell the firewall to drop all packets coming into your network from that IP address. It will also inspect the packet and look for signatures of maliciousness. Now, a very important fact to know about firewalls is there are two kinds. There are stateful and there are stateless firewalls. A stateful firewall looks at all packets and the context between them, but a stateless firewall only looks at each individual packet. There's all kinds of information to be gained in either case. Uh, an individual packet in and of itself might contain an amount of maliciousness. However, one packet on its own may not be malicious. However, a number of packets put together might be malicious. So there's definitely pros and cons in either case. These also operate at different levels of the OSI model, layer three and layer four. This practical includes a flag, so I'll let you work through it, but this is a great visual representation of how creating a firewall rule can stop, in this case, a denial of service attack, where an attacker's trying to overwhelm an internal server with tons of pointless requests. Now let's talk about virtual private networks. This is another thing that we've talked about on this channel long, long ago. You can check that out if that's something that's interesting to you. However, let's talk about it right now as well. Say you have two networks and you're in network A and you wanna get access to network B. We'll say network B is a business and network A is your home. You can use a VPN to be able to authenticate into network B over the internet in a secure tunnel, and that will allow you access to internal resources on network B. This is a technology that has allowed for work from home. So 
All through the pandemic, people were able to utilize VPNs to be able to get the job done. This is also something that people use to be able to access systems in other countries, and that allows them to have a, have a layer of anonymity with their network traffic. It's not perfect, but it definitely can help. Say you're in a country like China and you don't have access to a resource like Twitter or YouTube, and you wouldn't be able to watch this video, which makes me very sad. You can use a VPN and access YouTube and then watch this video, and we can be friends. Dajahal Wusher Studio Sec. So here we're introduced to a few different, to a few, to three different VPN technologies: PPP, PPTP, and IPsec. I'll let you go through this table and take some time to study it, but it's definitely something that is important to know later on. Now let's talk about LANs, and this is actually something that we've talked a lot about already in a previous walkthrough from this actual series, and you can check that out. But here's kind of a nice little refresher. We're talking about routers and switches and how switches can provide some scalability on your network. An important thing to know is that there are two different kinds of switches. One switch can operate at layer two while another can operate at layer three. Layer two switches will forward frames, but layer three switches will do that and they will use IP addresses, meaning that a layer three switch can actually really help scale up your network. As you can see on this graphic, this switch is actually creating two separate internal virtual local area networks. 196.168.1.1 and then 192.168.2.1. These are two separate internal networks that this switch is able, to, is able to route between. Now, although I use that term route, it is not a router. So definitely do not get a switch and a router confused. Now to wrap this room up, we have another practical exercise that you can check out. Again, another flag, I'll let you go ahead and do this on your own. So that way, you know, you get the practice. So that has been the networking fundamentals room in the intro to cybersecurity room on Try Hack Me. The next thing that we're gonna be doing is the DNS in detail. And if that is already out when you're watching this, that will be the top video. If it's not out yet, then definitely hit this bottom playlist to see what other walkthroughs in the series we've already published. With that, I'll see you all next time. Bye.